Hello, this is Spencer Farr from Vista Therapeutics. I wanted to give those of you who have been following us a brief update as well as a great example of a working system today. Let me once again very briefly remind you of how our technology works and then I will show it working. Let me turn the video around here. I'm going to draw a quick picture. We have nanowires that complete a circuit. They are attached to two electrodes. The nanowires are semiconducting nanowires made of silicon. We attach either antibodies or aptamers to the surface of these nan nanowires. When the target molecule, which might be a brain injury molecule, that is released after concussive injury, when that molecule binds to the surface of this nanowire and this molecule is charged, that's how molecules, biomarkers stay in solution in the blood, is they're charged, when they bind, that electric field given off by the charges on the biomarker increase the conductivity through this nanowire. And if you have a, a small voltage being pushed through this nanowire, as the conductivity increases, think about this as simply now measuring the conductivity through a meter. And as the number of antibodies or aptamers are filled up with target molecules, the conductivity through the nanowire increases. And this happens very rapidly and it takes very little compound. It's three orders of magnitude uh, easily more sensitive than ELISA assays. And let me show you an ongoing assay and you can see this for yourself. Let me briefly just remind you how the system works. Here are actual silicon chips. Down the middle of the silicon chips there are rows of nanowires. We then identify which of those nanowires are good and we connect them to a card. We call it a PCB or a nano card in our case. And then we wire bond, you can see these little tiny wires on some of the circuits, we wire bond them to the card and this one actually has an aptamer on it and I'm letting the aptamer rehydrate. We often run the experiment using a syringe pump but that's too slow for our purposes today so today I will actually just use a pipette. So we have this is called, a, this is actually a top-down card. We made this chip almost two years ago by e-beam lithography. We functionalized it with aptamers. Aptamers actually against two particular proteins, heat shot protein 27 and fibronectin. Nothing particularly special about those, just showing that we can. This, you're looking at an ongoing experiment. As we first added buffer, to these nanowires that have aptamers on them, you see this sort of slow drop in transconductance. What causes that is the aptamers are laying down, let me back up a little bit, the aptamers are actually laying down on the surface. Here's the nanowire surface and the aptamers are laying down and as we add fluid to them, they begin slowly to essentially stand back up like porcupine hairs. And since the nano, since the aptamers themselves carry a charge, as they stand back up, then the electric field around the nanowire begins to decrease slowly. It eventually comes to equilibrium. The second thing that we can do, and you can see that we have very good uh, transconductance through several nanowires and just you can see the numbers here we're looking in the in the millivolt range 7 times 10 to the minus 2 volts one way to normalize is we can actually then do what's called a voltage sweep 
That means we run a known voltage through each of the nanowires and we determine how they respond. So I'm going to do that now. We turn on the voltage sweep and it runs uh, negative 100 millivolts and then positive 100 millivolts uh, through each wire and then we can normalize to how much that nanowire changes as a function of a known voltage and that allows us to compare one nanowire to the next. This is very important to keep in mind that this particular chip has been dried and rehydrated and dried and rehydrated several times and I, would, I can pull up a data point if you'd like in a moment but I'll put this more in a report, we'll probably publish this, that they do not lose their sensitivity over time. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually add known concentrations of the target molecules. We have, it's hard to read, heat shock protein here and fibronectin in very low concentration and then as a control we have 0.1 percent uh, human serum albumin. It'll take me a moment to get these ready to go but we'll come back and we'll catch up when I'm ready to pipette these. You can see this is the, simple, the very simple system. One simply connects the nanobio sensor to a laptop or a desktop the software automatically runs the program. One inserts the card of interest and these cards we send them out so that the customer can functionalize these cards themselves, that is attach whatever capture molecule interests them, whether it be an antibody or an aptamer. We have a kit by the way that allows you to use any aptamer that's on the market today and or any combination and we can at present measure easily four different target molecules at once. Uh, for those of you who are interested in working with us we can get that up to 10 in about two months and we hope to have that up to about 50 in about four months. So this is the system and it's working quite well. I will come back in just a moment. Well actually since it is working right now let's just do the acid test and I'm going to add a a small volume of heat shock protein, excuse me, fibronectin uh, 70, excuse me, fibronectin, I'm, I'm trying to adjust the pipette, you can't see over here, here's the pipette. I'm going to add 20 microliters of 3 picograms per mil of fibronectin in the same buffer and we'll see what happens. Now keep in mind this is very sensitive. We're looking at minute changes uh, in, uh, in concentration and very minute changes in voltage. So one of the things we need to do is make sure that we always ground every tube uh, every time we use it. We, we ground the pipette, I ground my fingers, they're all grounded to the back of the nanobio sensor so that they all have the same basal level of charge to them. All right, we're now adding 20 microliters, you can see it, of 3 picograms per mil of fibronectin to 100 microliters and Right off the bat, you see, we get a very rapid increase. In fact, I'll have to adjust the scale because we got such a high increase. There are two phases. There is an initial uh, binding phase, then there's a secondary binding phase. It could well be that uh, there's, nevertheless, there was a, a small potential difference between the uh, one fluid in the next, so this initial spike was probably due to that potential difference. 
much more informatively, and look at this here, is this is fibronectin now binding to the aptamers. What we'll see in a moment is that not all of the nanowires respond because some of them have been functionalized to a different protein, that is HSP70. Uh, and um, so, for example, this blue trace represents a one nanowire. It's not responding to fibronectin, whereas uh, most of these are responding. In a moment, we'll add HSP70, and we should see uh, this, this nanowire responding. Let's see if there are any others that we should be looking at. No. In fact, what I ended up doing is changing the scale there, which is not what I wanted to do. Well, let me play with this a little bit. I changed the scale inadvertently, but you can see how well it was working. I'll come back shortly.